Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at some different methods to measure temperature. And we're going to look at three different devices that you can use as a way of measuring the temperature of something. So we're going to start off with, uh, with a very familiar one, a liquid-based thermometer. Then we're going to go on to look at bimetallic strips and finally look at thermocouples. Okay, so that's what we're going to start off with. So, first of all, liquid-based thermometers. So, as we go through, we're going to address essentially four questions. We're going to look at why the height of the liquid in a thermometer changes uh, with temperature. We're going to look at uh, what sensitivity is and how we can increase it. Uh, we're going to look at how we select what material we put into a thermometer. And we're going to look at how we make sure all thermometers, regardless of type, give the same reading. Okay, so uh, first of all, why does the height of a liquid increase with temperature? So we can kind of see it on the diagram on the left. The key is to recognize what's actually changing. So what's actually happening is as we increase temperature, we're increasing the kinetic energy of the molecules in there. And as we do that, that causes the separation between the particles to increase. And that means that the liquid overall expands. So you can see the size of the molecules hasn't changed, but the spacing between them has. And that's what causes the liquid to expand. And that's why the height increases because the liquid has expanded. OK, so next one, we're going to look at what sensitivity is and look at comparing the sensitivities of the two thermometers on the uh, the diagram that you can see. So first of all, sensitivity is the smallest change in conditions that produces a measurable change in the instrument's reading. So let's imagine both thermometers started at the level you can see on the left in blue, and then we change them so both one and two are at the same temperature but slightly increased from the starting one. So we describe thermometer one as being more sensitive because the same change in temperature produced a bigger change in the column height. So there's a bigger measurable change for the same changing condition. So one is more sensitive, which could be a good thing depending on your application. Okay, so that's what sensitivity is. So how can we actually increase the sensitivity of a thermometer when we're designing it? Well, for a liquid-based thermometer, it's all to do with the cross-sectional area of the liquid column. So what we've got here now is two thermometers with the same volume of liquid, but we've got different cross-sectional areas, which is why they've got different heights. But if the temperature is increased, both liquids will expand by the same amount, which means that the larger cross-section area will have a smaller height change, which means it's less sensitive. So although their volume increases by the same amount, the height change will be smaller due to the larger cross-sectional area. So depending on our application, we can adjust the cross-sectional area of our thermometer, and that will change how sensitive our measuring device is, which is quite useful. OK, so next, how do we pick a material for a liquid thermometer? Well, the key is we want the graph of volume versus temperature to look like something on the left. But there's also something else we need to bear in mind. We need to make sure that over the range of temperatures we want to measure, that the material stays a liquid. So, for example, um, for a liquid, we need to think about two points. It's freezing point or it's boiling point. So those will set the maximum and minimum temperatures that we can use. So mercury, which is commonly used for thermometers, has a melting point at minus 39, and it boils or turns into a gas at 357. So that gives you a pretty large range, and is considerably bigger than the range of water, which is one of the reasons we might choose mercury over water. It gives us a larger range that we can do, whereas with water, we couldn't measure anything below zero, because it would turn to ice, and we couldn't measure anything over 100, because it would be turning into water vapor. 
Okay, so that's one of the things we need to think about when we select our material, the range of measurements we want. Um, but we also want the graph of volume versus temperature to be linear, because that's what allows us to predict uh, different temperatures based on the volume very accurately. So if we plot a graph like this, it doesn't have to go through the origin, but it does need to be a straight line, at least in the range of temperatures that you are interested in. Uh, so that's what we're looking for, and that will help you improve your accuracy uh, when you're measuring temperatures between the ones that you've used to actually build the thermometer. So speaking of which, how do we make sure all thermometers give the same readings? Well, it's done by, first of all, making sure they're all made of materials with linear expansion, and also because the thermometers are all fixed using the same two fixed points. So fixed points refers to something at a temperature that doesn't change. So one of the fixed points we use is the melting point of pure water, so water with no uh, nothing dissolved in it, no other materials. Uh, so we use zero degrees centigrade as one of them. And the other one we use is boiling point of pure water, which is always at 100 degrees Celsius. So these two numbers, as long as your atmospheric pressure, stay constant no matter where you are. So we use them and every thermometer that's made is checked and we use these two temperatures to mark two points and then because it's linear we can then find anything between or outside those values so um, that's essentially the process we use to build a liquid based thermometer we select a cross-sectional area we select a liquid and we when we're building it we use two temperatures to mark on the thermometer Okay, this height is 100 degrees, this height is 0 degrees, and then we divide it into a, a 100 divisions in between, which we call degrees. Okay, so that's how a liquid based thermometer works and how we can calibrate and design them to make them do what we want. Next, we're going to look at two other designs for thermometers that can also be used. So one of the ways we can use this is it's called a bimetallic strip. Uh, which is kind of what it sounds like. It's just two metals that have been fixed together, but there's two different metals, so they respond differently to temperature. And in fact, they expand out at different rates as they are heated. So it's the difference in expansion that causes them to bend. So they're, they're fixed together, so they can't just expand over the top. And that's what makes them bend in each of these directions. So in the diagram that you can see, brass expands or contracts by a larger amount for the same temperature change. And so we sometimes describe that as being a higher expansion coefficient. You'll see that language used. So we're going to look at two different ways we can make use of this principle. So one thing we can use them for is a temperature sensitive switch. So with this strip that you can see here, if the temperature rises in our circuit, which could potentially be dangerous, the bimetallic strip will bend and then the connection that you can see on the bimetallic strip will go in, become in contact with what's labeled as the contact. And if you do that, you'll complete a circuit which could be used to activate an alarm, it could activate an automatic shutdown system. Once you've completed the circuit, that's what tells and it's something to happen. So it's a safety based device. The other thing you can do with biometallic strip is actually make thermometers. So what you do is you actually wrap it up into a coil like you can see, and then you use the end of the coil to push a needle or a pointer around on a temperature dial. So that's what you can see here. We can see a uh, on the right at higher temperature it's expanded which has pushed the pointer or the needle around indicating a higher temperature so we would do the make this the same way we would a liquid based thermometer so we would uh, calibrate it using zero degrees and 100 degrees for example and then divide that into divisions and we'd 
choose metals for our strip that have a linear expansion with temperature. So we're thinking about the same things, even though it's a different design. But just like a liquid based thermometer, the problem with this design is the time it takes for it to produce a reading. So you have to allow the the bimetallic strip time to expand as it's heated, which takes some time. So you can't take readings very quickly with it, which is fairly problematic if you're trying to take measurements of something that's changing. So that's an issue with it. But one design that doesn't have that problem is called a thermocouple. So let's have a look at how that works. So a thermocouple is no longer based on thermal expansion because that's the problem with the liquid and with the bimetallic strip. Thermal expansion takes time. It happens very slowly, especially in solids uh, and less so in liquids. And it happens very quickly and dramatically in gases. So what we to build a thermocouple, the first thing we need is two regions with different temperatures. So one of those will be the thing that we're trying to measure. So on the, on the diagram, you can see it's labeled as the target. The other region needs to be something that we know the temperature of and it remains fixed. So an ice bath is a very good one to use because it stay, it, we know it's at zero degrees and will stay at zero degrees as long as there is ice in it. And we'll look at why that's the case uh, in a later video. So that's a very common example of what we do. So we've got a reference cold temperature, which is an ice bath, and we've got something else that we want to measure the temperature of that gives us our two temperature regions. Um, and just a quick note here. So in the diagram, you can see we've got lead wires connected to the ends of A and B. Uh, for cost purposes, they don't often do that. They often uh, we'll have them made out of copper, which is also what material A is. Uh, so that's not, you don't always need three types of wire, you can just get away with two. And you can see that on the right hand side, we would need some sort of milli voltmeter to take a measurement. And we'll look at why that is now. Okay, so the reason this works is free electrons will diffuse from a region that is hot to a region that is cold. And um, that's the principle on which this is based. And the other key thing is that in different materials, this diffusion happens at different rates. So those are the two kind of key principles involved here. So that means that the opposite end of A and B, charge starts building up because electrons are diffusing from what's hot to what is cold. And if they're diffusing at different rates, that means we're going to get more charge in one than the other. So we get a difference in the amount of charge, which we also know as a potential difference. And that means we can measure it using a millivoltmeter. So it's quite a small change, which is why we need a millivoltmeter, but it is a measurable change. Um, just a quick note, this also works for measuring cold things. So if your target was colder than the ice bath, the electrons would just diffuse the other way and you'd still get a potential difference. So that's still fine. So the benefit of a thermocouple is the speed at which it responds. So electron diffusion happens very quickly, even though there are different rates. So it's very effective for measuring something where the temperature is changing continuously. It, uh, you can take measurements very quickly. And the other thing is because this is made out of metal, metals have very high melting points. So it gives you a very large range of temperatures that you can take measurements over unlike your liquid based ones that we've seen earlier. OK, so something to bear in mind with your thermal couple. So when you're building one, uh, you would also need to calibrate it as well. So we use the same two fixed points as we we have uh, would generally so far. So the melting point of ice and the boiling point of water pure, which would give you zero and 100 degrees. And you'd pick metals that give you a linear relationship between temperature and potential difference. So that's a case of trying out a few and seeing how that works, because that would give you the most accurate temperature readings uh, when you're using your voltmeter to give you the temperatures. And if you want a more sensitive thermometer, what you want to do is 
choose metals that give you larger potential differences for the same temperature change. So again, we can play with the sensitivity as well by choosing appropriate metals. Okay, so that finishes the uh, what we're looking at in this video in terms of the three different measuring devices and how they work and their advantages and disadvantages. So these are the things that you would be expected at this point to be able to 